In today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to use a digital food scale for tracking macros. Why track macros? Macros are how we change our body composition, how we achieve our, achieve our dream physique. It's different than counting calories because at the end of the day, when we count macros, we wanna have a specific breakdown of carbs, proteins, and fats. And that breakdown is gonna be unique to you and whatever your goals may be. If you're looking to build muscle mass, we're gonna have a higher protein to make sure that we have an environment that we can create and build muscle. Some of us are gonna like lower carb, higher fat. Some of us are gonna like lower fat, higher carb. But today is about the scale. So this was something I was super intimidated to start with. I just felt like I had no idea and it's actually very simple. So I'm gonna show you how simple it is. First, you're gonna want a digital food scale. This one is by Arboleaf. I got it off Amazon, we'll link that below. It is a rechargeable scale. I cannot tell you how much having a rechargeable scale has changed my life because there's been so many times that I pull out my scale and the battery goes low and then it won't work. And that is extremely frustrating when you're sitting there trying to make your meal and you're like, well, guess I'm not counting for this meal. So rechargeable scale is key. First thing, when you're looking at your scale and you get a digital scale, you wanna make sure it counts in small increments ideally grams. I typically use grams or ounces. Those are the only two things I measure in for the most part. The other thing you're gonna wanna make sure is that it has this tear function. The tear is gonna be our zero function and that's gonna be super important when it comes to weighing and measuring our food because it's gonna make it easy to zero out that scale and that is gonna be absolutely key because if we can't zero out our scale, then we likely have the container or some other thing involved and it's not just the weight of the food. I always keep my scale somewhere handy, so it just sits right under. So all I do is have to open the drawer, pop my scale onto the counter. You could even leave it on the counter if you want to. First thing I always do is I turn my scale on, then I check what units is my scale currently in and what units do I wanna weigh and measure. So you just have a unit button, and for my instance, mine goes from grams to milliliters, to milliliters, to fluid ounces, to ounces. I like having all of those options just in case I need them, but I typically mainly use grams or ounces. There's two ways to measure your food, and this is what I'm gonna show you. So the first way is gonna be taking your container, whatever that container may be, adding it to your scale. Once we add it to our scale, we wanna make sure that we hit tear and we zero out our scale. So now I have my container on the scale and my scale says zero grams. Then let's say I wanna have some frozen blueberries. One serving size is gonna be one cup, which is 140 grams. My scale currently says zero grams. I'm gonna add 140 grams of my frozen blueberries to this scale. It's a lot of blueberries. A hundred and forty grams. So now I know what is on my scale and what I'm eating is exactly 140 grams. And I didn't go off for a generic kind of eyeball measurement or using a measuring cup where I could have heaped those blueberries over and actually eaten about 170 grams. In 140 grams of blueberries, there's one gram of fat, 17 grams of carbs, and one gram of protein. I'm then gonna scan this label and it's gonna go right into my app so I know exactly what I'm eating and it counts it up for the day. So that's one way to do this. That's, I typically do that if I'm doing oats or things like that, I'll put the container on the scale, zero it out, add my food to it when I know how many grams I wanna get to. A second way of doing this is gonna be to take the actual container. So now we're gonna just subtract out. I like to do this for things like nut butter, um, anything like that. So I'm gonna take my nut butter, I'm gonna remove the lid because that's really important. I'm gonna put the nut butter on the scale. Now I'm gonna zero out my scale. So my scale says zero grams, even though I have this giant container of nut butter on the scale. Let's say I wanna get 16 grams out. What I'm gonna do is take my tablespoon, 16 grams is one tablespoon, and I'm gonna subtract out 16 grams. Interesting enough, this looks like a tablespoon, but that's actually 26 grams of nut butter. This video is sponsored by Element. Did you know that when you sweat, the primary electrolyte lost is sodium? When sodium's not replaced, it's common to experience symptoms such as muscle fatigue and cramps. Element is a tasty electrolyte drink mix with everything you need and nothing you don't. It contains a science-backed electrolyte ratio of 1,000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. It can help prevent and eliminate muscle cramps, fatigue, headaches, sleeplessness, and other symptoms related to electrolyte deficiency. 
Element is formulated to help everyone with their electrolyte needs. That includes moms, dads, fitness enthusiasts, athletes, and it's perfectly suited for those of you on a keto or low carb diet. Right now, Element is offering my subscribers, that's you all, a free sample pack with any order. That's eight single serving packets free with any Element order. This is a great way to try all eight flavors or share with a salty friend. Get yours at drinkelement.com forward slash Chrissy. This deal is only available through my link, so make sure you click below at D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com forward slash Christy. That's K-R-I-S-C-I. Now, back to the video. Things like nut butter are super important to weigh and measure because I don't know about you or if you can see that, but that looks pretty dang level to me, but it's 10 grams more than an actual tablespoon. So I'm gonna add in a little bit back into my container. And now I've got 16 grams exactly. So I can add my 16 grams or my one tablespoon to my blueberries. Close up my lid, put the nut butter away. And now I know I have one cup of blueberries with one tablespoon of nut butter. Now I know exactly what's in my dish. One cup of blueberries, which is 140 grams, and 16, tables, 16 grams of nut butter, which is one tablespoon. So now I can go to my app, I can scan my labels, and I'm gonna give you the exact macros for this meal. Or this snack, because this is definitely not enough of a meal for me. So I'm gonna open my app. You could use whatever counting app you wanna use. I personally use the first form app. So I'm gonna open my app. I'm gonna hit add food. There's a little barcode up in the right corner and I'm gonna scan my nut butter. It pops up with what a serving is and that's two tablespoons. Well, I know I only did one tablespoon, so I'm gonna change that to one tablespoon, which is gonna give me 105 calories, three grams of protein, eight and a half grams of fat, three and a half grams of carbs. I'm gonna hit save. Then I'm gonna go back to my barcode. I'm gonna scan my bag of blueberries and it pops up with one cup. I know that I measured out 140 grams for the package, which is one cup. You also could put in the grams that you did, but I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save. And we're gonna look, and in this little bowl of blueberries and almond butter, I have 175 calories, four grams of protein, 21 grams of carbs, 10 grams of fat, and five grams of fiber. It's that simple. So that is how you use a scale. A food skill is likely gonna be unfamiliar and honestly pretty annoying at first, but the more you practice with it, the easier it gets and the more second nature it becomes. It also helps you get the hang of accurate portion control. For instance, I honestly thought I had a pretty good tablespoon until I saw 26 grams on the scale and I was aiming for 16. That's a very big difference if you look at all of the things you eat throughout the day, how that can shift and have more hidden calories than you actually know you're consuming. In the end, the goal of your food scale is to enhance the accuracy and the consistency when it comes to tracking. And like I said at the start of this video, tracking is important. It doesn't have to be something that you do forever. You can take days off, but it's super important for helping you understand portion control, helping you understand what you're putting in your body. And the end goal of this is gonna help us change our body composition. That is why macro, macro tracking is it helpful and that's why it's beneficial for most people. If you have certain goals of looking a certain way, this is gonna help you do that paired with an incredible exercise routine. In the end, macro tracking is not gonna be for everyone, but if you are gonna macro track, take the time, invest in getting a scale because this guy is gonna be so much more accurate and so much more helpful and it's gonna get you to your goals sooner than if you're just using measuring cups. If you're wanting to learn more about macro tracking, how it can help you, a lot more detail on how to do so and more tips, check out the link above. We have a macro tracking guide that's gonna be really valuable for you. If you like this video, please smash the like button, comment below with any questions you might have. I hope that was helpful on using a scale it's really not that intimidating and it is super beneficial. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next video.